One of the most northern points on our map is Parsons Creamery. The only quest that sends us here is the secret of Cabot House. After completing that quest, we'll find raiders holed up here. And one more. Right here, right here. What? Okay, I didn't know Pain Train could knock raiders through walls. With the raiders dead, we can explore. The room I ran into, where I knocked that raider through the wall, is the office. On the ground next to a filing cabinet, we find an advanced locked safe with ammunition caps and goodies inside. Turning around, we find a door to the left that leads back outside. Here we find a milk machine. We see on the machine that the company that produced this milk and that likely owned Parsons Creamery is called Little Cobb Creamery. At the northwestern end of this platform, we find a spot for a great view. Off in the distance, we see a tower with a flickering light in a window. I wonder what it could be. But first, heading back inside to finish exploring the creamery, we don't find much else on this bottom floor, so taking the staircase in the middle of the creamery, we arrive on the loft level. Here we see a gangster wooden cutout, which presumably has been used for target practice, and after looting the raider, we find a bit of a plywood ramp bridging some pipes, making it easy to move to the eastern side of this loft. Here, we find the skeleton of a woman with a chessboard. We get every indication that she either had a child with her, or she was a young teenager herself. There is a bed here, and it's surrounded by toys, teddy bears, cars, and even a rocket ship. We find a deflated rubber ball and a board game. Before the war, this loft must have been a favorite play place for some young children. All we find in this corner is a curtain of dirty water. Turning around, we find a sandbag barricade, and behind it, an ammo box and a tool case, both of which are chocked full of ammunition. We find a huge hole in the southern wall. This allows us to walk out onto the roof where we find a boat? What is a boat doing on this roof? Inside the boat, we find a cooler with ammunition, a fishing pole, and a bunch of empty milk bottles. Okay, so either the owners of Little Cobb Creamery stored their boat on the roof of the creamery, or perhaps in the blast of the nuclear explosions of 2077, this boat was lifted from the nearby waters and blown all the way here. We see some scrap metal and plywood forming a bit of a ramp on the western side of the creamery. This allows us to creep around its perimeter until we arrive on the rooftop at the north northern end of the creamery, and here we find two skeletons. I find it hard to believe that these two people were trying to find shelter on the roof of the creamery. Instead, perhaps they were trying to access some weapons to protect themselves. For here, we find a novice-locked explosives crate, though the only explosive we find inside is one frag mine. Coincidentally yes. or not, these two skeletons are right next to a hole in the wall that's overlooking the woman's skeleton we found on that loft level. If we use a jetpack to arrive on the top roof, we don't find anything here. So hopping back down, we find a pipe leading from the creamery all the way to some milk processing vats. But we don't find any hatches, rail signs, or any other secrets here. But it's dark, and I don't like doing these things in the dark, so we are going to head on over to that mattress we found by all the toys and rest until morning. When morning breaks, we can hop back in our suit of power armor, and now I want to find out what that tower is all about off to the southwest. So hopping down, we find a bit of a dirt road running between a bunch of rocks. Along the way, we pass two destroyed pre-war trucks, and at the end of the road, we see some sort of camp right next to this tower. There's a huge fire burning at the camp. This is Lynn Woods. But before heading into the shacks to see who's there, if we sneak around to the southern side of the building, we find a staircase leading up to the tower. It's a tall, imposing structure. And as we creep up, we find trails of blood. Who could have made this? Well, whomever did, didn't trigger this handmade tripwire, or perhaps set up this trap. It's connected to a fragmentation bouquet hovering above the steps. 
This tower is based on a real tower at this exact location in the real world. The real tower is simply called Stone Tower, and it was built in 1936 to act as a fire observation tower. But in the Fallout universe, apparently far more sinister things have been going on here. We find more blood puddles on the landings as we continue up the stairs. And at the top of the stairs, we find the body of a settler slumped over in a corner. This settler is the one who left the trail of blood that we followed to the top of the tower. On his inventory, we find a key, but no box up here that this key unlocks, and how did this settler get wounded? As we stand up, we begin to hear commotion down below. Peering over, we don't really see anything. Here we find a first aid kit, and on top of the shelf we find three explosives, a plasma grenade, a fragmentation grenade, and a very rare cryogenic grenade. We don't see much over the ledge, but someone's shooting at us, and it's then we You're see a raider good. out a window. Waste of ammo. Turning around, we find some sort of broadcast tower with a switch. Oh, and turning on this siren spawns two death claws near to this camp. One by the shore off to the south. Maybe I'll just let the death claw deal with them. And another one off to the west. This one's an albino. Looks like they made quick work of the raiders. With the raiders dead, we can hop on down and take care of the death claw. Turning around, we can race down the hill to take care of the other. We find the remains of the raider. <laughs> Big old chunks. But where's that death claw? We see something off to the south across the water. We'll check that out in a minute. Instead, let's head back up the hill, and we find the siren continuing to blare. Well, it looks like this thing is going to sound until we turn it off. So heading back to the top of the tower, we can flip off the siren. Also up here, we find a Death Claw Gauntlet. Not a unique item, but a powerful and rare one. With the tower explored, we can hop on down to explore these shacks. On the ground, we move west to the shack. We find a cooking station next to a couch outside, some meat on a spit over a campfire, and then moving up a rickety ramp, we spot more spatters of blood on the walls and the ground. Heading inside, oh no. We find the victims, two settlers, a woman bent over backwards, tangled in a tipped over shelf, and a man lying on some stairs. And this completes the picture. These shacks were the homes of these three settlers. The raiders who attacked us when we reached the top of the tower likely attacked this place and killed the settlers. The third, mortally wounded, tried to scale the tower, knowing that sounding the alarm would lure the nearby Deathclaw. Deathclaw that would clear the raiders out. But before he could, he succumbed to his wounds. Nearby, we find a sleeping bag, and on it, a copy of Wasteland Survival Guide, the Scrapyard Home Decoration Guide. We permanently unlock new decoration items. Behind the dead woman, we find a first aid kit on a shelf, and an end of dungeon steamer trunk, locked with a master lock. We either have to pick this, or we can use the key we found on the body of the man at the top of the tower to unlock it. And inside, we find weapons, armor, and ammunition. 
To the right is a tipped over chair overlooking the cooking spit. Turning around, we can follow a path that leads to the next shack system. Here we find more beds, a radio playing static, and tipped over chairs and containers. Signs of violence. Heading outside, we can move east to find a bit of a storage shed. Inside, we find an explosives box. Finally, let's explore what we saw across the water to the south. Heading down the hill, we see a barge on the water using our jetpack to sail on over. We find the skeletons of two fishermen, still clutching their lunch pails, still surrounded by buckets and fish. Though why the fish haven't turned to skeletons too is a mystery. Now we see a bit of a boat submerged nearby, hopping out of our power armor. We can swim below to explore it, but just as I did, I got an alert that a nearby checkpoint was under attack. Oh, perfect timing. And there wasn't anything here anyway. Heading back to our power armor, we can hop back in and find a way to climb these rocks. At the top, we see some sort of structure and super mutants. They were rushing off to fight something, but then they saw us. And that explains it. A death claw appeared to attack a nearby checkpoint, but instead it was intercepted by these super mutants. This is Breakheart Banks a former farmstead that something? overlooks a nearby military checkpoint. After killing the super mutant at this watchtower, we get attacked by another from the nearby shack. I guess it's clear after all. <laughs> after killing all of the mutants here, we can now get to exploring Let's head back to the guard tower to begin exploring. We see the checkpoint off to the south. We'll explore that in a minute. On the ground nearby, we find an ammo canister. Next to this is a holotape player cabinet with a Nuka-Cola Quantum on top and a dirty water on a bottom shelf. Here we also find a first aid kit. On the floor next to a crate, we find a super mutant wastecloth. This is special armor we can save for our companion Strong. Heading down the hill west towards the shack, we can try to put together a story of what happened here. There's a destroyed turret on the ground. But we didn't destroy this. That must mean the super mutants did. And we see a farm off to the west, and super mutants don't farm, oh no. Heading into the women's restroom, we find the corpses of the settlers who lived here. A man and a woman stuffed in one of the stalls. This was their farm. Heading outside, we see that they were farming for corn. The corpses are still fresh, giving us the impression that the mutants attacked it and sacked it recently. But in the corn farm, we find a whole bunch of brown weeds, which gives us the opposite impression, that the farmers were killed quite a while ago. On the side of the bathrooms, we find a cigarette machine and a Nuka-Cola machine. This Nuka-Cola machine is a bit bugged. The Nuka-Cola machines in the game have cabinets that are supposed to spawn Nuka-Cola inside, but the spawn point for the Nuka-Cola is behind this machine. Because of this, when the Nuka-Cola spawns, it can get shot out where it lands on the ground or stuck between the shack and the machine. We can often go into the bathroom where we find that Nuka-Cola has slipped into one of the stalls. And there's always one back there that I can see, but I can never loot. Heading north from here, we see a table with a cooler and some tin cans on top. There is a men's restroom if we turn around, but nothing inside. The super mutants have had enough time to fully move in. They've brought their meat drying racks and they've got huge cauldrons and cages on display. These overlook some picnic tables that are empty. Turning around, we see the shack. Underneath it are a bunch of tires and a suitcase. The suitcase has some decent low-level armor inside, but before we explore the shack, we can turn north, where we find some melons. Near to the melon is a car overlooking the river, and to the right is another car overlooking the same river. In a tree nearby are a bunch of tin can chimes, and on the ground we find empty beer bottles. That's because this must have been some sort of pre-war makeout point. 
On the hood of this car, we find two skeletons still entwined in a loving embrace. At least they had each other when the world ended. And this knowledge makes the name Breakheart Banks a bit ironic. Though I'm sure a few hearts at least were broken here. From here, we find some stairs that lead all the way down to the water. Oh, this would have been easier to climb. Instead, I took the hard route. But the melon planted at this farm is scattered all over the place. We find some even down here and more along the shore. Heading back up the steps, we can move towards that strange building we saw on our way up. Here we find even more melon. It's surrounded by a rusting chain link fence. Inside we find a toolbox and there's some sort of yellow console with levers. And next to this is, I think, a broken antenna, I guess. So I'm not exactly sure what this was used for before the war. Maybe it was used by park rangers to communicate with each other. Near to this, we find a skeleton next to a picker-up truck. Yes, that is what it's called. I didn't name the truck. And it appears to be hovering in the air. This is just an engine glitch. We can bump it to put it back where it belongs. He, too, was overlooking the river. Perhaps he caught out of his car to admire the nuclear explosion of 2077 before being vaporized in the blast. We can follow the trail of melons all the way back up the hill to the shack. Now we can explore it. Heading upstairs, we find more super mutant armor. A super mutant chest harness lying on a nearby bookcase. That's two new pieces of armor for Strong, bound to make him happy. We see a weapons workbench over in a corner next to two mattresses on the ground where we killed that super mutant. There is one first aid box on a wall. And then turning around, we find a grill with some produce on top, a toolbox beneath it, an open refrigerator with meat and corn inside. And then heading up some stairs, we find another mattress with an end of dungeon steamer trunk. This one is not locked. Here we also find another ammo case. That's it for Breakheart Banks, and sadly, we can't turn it into a settlement. When I first discovered it, I thought that surely we could have, due to its proximity to the slog and also because there's a farm here. But no, the story of this place is that the farmers who worked here were slaughtered by super mutants. And even after clearing it, we sadly can't turn it into a settlement. On our way out, we pass the super mutant guard post, where we see that we missed something. A yellow ammunition crate. Oh, looks like I triggered some sort of trap. There was a tension trigger on the lid of this crate, and it appears to have been attached to a Tesla trap. But for some reason, it didn't trigger. I guess it had already been triggered. When done, we can head down the hill to the military checkpoint and loot it of its treasures. Remember, we don't find it under attack because the Death Claw that spawned got distracted by the super mutants. And with that, we fully explore Parsons Creamery, Lynn Woods, and Breakheart Banks. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'm getting ready to go out of town, which is why I'm producing shorter content this week. But when I come back, I'm going to have a whole bunch of goodies to share with you. If you don't want to miss it, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. I have a brand new shirt in the shop. That's right, it's everyone's favorite villain with a theme song from Fallout 3. The design comes on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. You can also find it on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, prints, mugs, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. I am becoming more active on Twitter. I use Twitter to respond to viewers and to make announcements, so if you're active on Twitter, I encourage you to follow me at Oxhorn. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with brand new videos.